Welcome to How to Paint a Celestial Vindicator. Here's your paint list. For the blue armor, we're gonna take this base color of three parts periscopes and one part sick green, and we're gonna put it in three separate containers. Then for the shadow, we're gonna add some hex lichen to that. And for the highlight, we'll add two drops of foul green. And this will be our three color up base color for the blue. So we're gonna start off with our shadow mix, the one that had hexed lichen in it. And don't try to get it all in one coat. Go over it lightly, then again, and then again until you get a solid color. Now we'll use our base mix, which is just the periscopes and sick green. And you'll spray this at like a downward 45 degree angle. So you want to hit all the upper areas, but not get stuff that's directly pointing down. And then the shield I just picked to highlight towards the bottom. Now we take our highlight mix and just concentrate it on certain areas. Try not to cover up that medium coat. You wanna have all three colors showing, but instead of spraying all over the model, just pick the spots that you think the highlights would be. I wasn't completely happy with the last highlight, so I decided to dip my brush into some ivory and mix that directly into the cup of the airbrush where I had leftover of the last highlight. Alright, now we start the edge highlighting. We're going to take our double zero here and use a mixture of foul green and ivory just to start off the edges. Now with the same brush, we're gonna use pure dead white and we're gonna work on points of light. And you can use these for the brightest points of light as well as chips along the edges of the armor.
Okay, so the easier way to do this would have been to airbrush the white areas, which is the loincloth and the inside of his shoulder pads, and then mask those off and then do the rest of the blue armor. But I decided to do it backwards. So this is what is involved if you do it backwards like me. So learn from my mistakes, do the white first, mask those off and then do the blue armor. I decided to do like a bone color for the white. So for that, we'll undercoat with khaki. And once the khakis dry, we'll go and try to hit the center of the shoulder pad with bone white. Now we'll take some charred brown and start to base coat all the areas that will be gold or red. I had a little bit of black ink on my palette and I wanted this brown to get a little bit more coverage so I'll dip my brush into some of that black ink and mix it in to the charred brown. Just don't mix it so much that you can't see brown and it just looks like black paint. Just darken it up a little bit. So in the Age of Sigmar booklet, these little leather pieces and his belt are kind of a violet color, kind of between purple and red. So this is going to be painted red first, and then we're going to change the, the tone. So we'll use scarlet red to hit everything but the deepest folds. Then we'll highlight up a little bit more using Vermilion. And for the very extreme and edge highlights, we will use Sunny Skin Tone. So we make a mixture of red ink and violet ink here to kind of push the highlight colors down into the base coat and also push the red towards a more violet color. It's a very subtle change, but it looks a lot different than what we painted. Next, we start the gold areas using Vallejo Liquid Gold Old Gold. Now these are alcohol based. I think they're like denatured alcohol based paints. So they like to dry and clump up very fast. So if you see your brush start to do that, I have some 91% alcohol that I dip my brush in to clean it. Don't thin the paint with that because over time it'll clump up. So don't think about dumping some of that into your uh, bottle of liquid gold so that you can thin it out because it'll ruin it. However, you can use it to clean your brush. In 
And for the silver bits, we will use Vallejo Liquid Silver Color White Gold. And it's the same thing with this. You can use that 91% alcohol to clean your brush. And it seems like a pain, like, oh, it clumps up and it dries a little too fast, but it looks phenomenal. That's why you use it. Alright, now we need to put a wash over this gold, and for that I use two parts De La Rowney Burnt Umber ink, and one part of De La Rowney Black ink. So for shading the gold further, I usually go for oils if I can't do airbrushing. This time I wanted to use some pigments and I wanted to show you that you can get a different effect using pigments. Plus I hadn't used them in a while and it's kind of good to go back to some techniques that you might have used in the past and see how it works. Still make sure you still got it, you know? The trick here is I'm using a wet brush to pick up the dry pigment so that I can place it and then once it's dry and it turns like a chalky gray color for some reason, I use a dry brush here to kind of feather it out and you won't know what it looks like until it's wet so you can airbrush some water onto the model and see if everything is where you like it and then varnish it to lock everything in place because until you varnish it the pigment can be wiped off. So here I use the same process to do the colonial violet on the blue areas. And I'm thinking, oh, it's just gonna wipe off just like the black, and it didn't. So I have to come back with the dry brush, but this time it's not dry. I actually get it damp, get most of the water out of it, and then have to feather all the edges of the areas that I'm painting right now. All right. Time to edge highlight all the gold and silver areas using one part silver, three parts polished gold. And you're going to see the shading on the edges of the top of the shield there and also at the top of the hammer. And that's just the ease of airbrushing. If you got your airbrush out already, you can uh, hit these areas without risking hitting a lot of the other areas. I did the, the shield while the shield was not connected and then the hammer, it's far enough away from him that I could use black ink and kind of shade things. Sped things up a bit. All right, time to hit the little parchment paper ribbons that are hanging off his belt. And for that, we'll use heavy brown. Now we'll highlight that up with bone white. Alright, now I'm going to start to black line all the details whenever there's a surface change between the metallic and blue and just turn it into a comic book. And the best brush for this I find is an old detail brush that you might have that has like five hairs left on it. Use black ink, thin it with slow dry as much as you can to the point to where you only have to make one or two strokes on a detail in order to see the definitive black line. If you 
you can't see it without puddling it in there, then you have it too thin. But that's the trick of using your little baby eyelash brushes. So I used that heavy brown on the base. This is the finished model. Uh, the handle on both the sword and his hammer were done the same way as the belt. For some reason, I didn't have that footage in my camera. So user error. And then the scabbard itself, we just painted black and did some heavy brown and bone white on the edging. And that's it. I hope you guys liked the video and I'll see you next time.